Welcome back. Today we are going to continue Lesson 1.7, Solving with Absolute Values. Podcast 1.7a was Solving Absolute Value Equations. This podcast, 1.7b, is Solving Absolute Value Inequalities. Let's get started. Absolute value inequalities will generate compound inequalities like you saw in Lesson 1.6. Remember, compound inequalities are connected by the words and or or. Let's take a look at this key concept page where we look at absolute value inequalities using less than and less than or equal to. In our first one, we have the absolute value of AX plus B is less than C. This statement can be rewritten as a compound inequality using the word and. You can rewrite it as AX plus B is greater than negative C and AX plus B is less than C or you can write it like I did here as AX plus B is less than C and greater than negative C. Now one thing you want to notice when you put the negative here with the C, when you take the C and you change it to its opposite, you also have to change the inequality symbol. So don't forget you need to do that, it's very important. Now on the number line, what your typical solution would look like is you would have an open point on the left and an open point on the right. And you would have a solution between those two points. So your number line would be shaded between the two open points. Now if we have less than or equal to, it's very similar to just less than but you do have the equal to. So if I have the absolute value of AX plus B is less than or equal to C, I can rewrite that as AX plus B and I have to flip the inequality and make it a negative C and AX plus B is less than or equal to C. So you can write it separately using the word and, or you can write it all as one as I have right here. Again, on your number line, you would have two points, but this time, because it's equal to, you would have shaded points. And again, your solution would be between those two shaded points. And as I said earlier, because we put the opposite of C here, you have to flip the inequality symbol. That's very important. Let's take a look at greater than or equal to and greater than. First I have the absolute value of AX plus B is greater than C. This can be rewritten as a compound inequality with the word or. You have to use the word or in your compound statements if it is an or to start with. So I would write AX plus B is less than negative C or AX plus B is greater than C. Again, when I change C to its opposite, I have to take the inequality symbol and flip it as well. On my number line, this solution again would consist of two open points, but I want to shade everything that is less than my left point, so I would shade to the left of the left point, and I want to shade everything that's greater than my right point, so I would shade everything to the right of the right point. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, but for most of the time, your solution on a number line will look like this does. If I have the absolute value of AX plus B is greater than or equal to C, again I can rewrite that as a compound inequality with the word OR. So I have AX plus B is less than or equal to negative C, or AX plus B is greater than or equal to C. Again, when I change the C to its opposite, 
I have to change the inequality symbol also. On this number line, you would have two shaded points. And again, you would shade less than the point on the left. So you would shade to the left of the left point. You would also shade greater than the point on the right. So you would shade to the right of the right point. Now, I do have an example I'd like to look at with you. It's got some numbers in it so that you can better understand what I'm showing you. This example, the absolute value of 4x plus 5 is greater than 13. We have greater than, so I automatically know that's going to be an OR statement. Okay, so I rewrite as compound 4x plus 5 and I'm going to have a negative 13 over here, so I have to flip the inequality symbol to less than negative 13. I also want to write it as 4x plus 5 is greater than 13. And that's exactly as it appears, but without the absolute value bars. Now I want to solve each of these. So I'm going to solve the one on the left by subtracting 5 from both sides. And if I subtract 5, I'll get negative 18. I then divide by 4 and I get x is less than negative 18 fourths, which reduces to negative 9 halves. Now I want to go solve the one on the right. So again, I would subtract 5 from both sides, and I would get 4x is greater than 8. Divide both sides by 4, and I would get x is greater than 2. So here is what my solution is but I have to put the word OR in there, so I put the word OR between them. So my solution is red. X is less than negative 9 halves, or X is greater than 2. Now if I want to put that on a number line, I would have an open point at negative 9 halves and an open point at 2. I want to shade everything that is less than negative 9 halves, so that would be to the left of negative 9 halves. I also want to shade everything that is greater than 2, and that would be to the right of my point 2. So this is what your number line will look like. Now, if you want to double check and make sure that the negative 9 halves is your boundary point, it's not part of your solution, it is just a boundary point, you can substitute, substitute it in and make sure that you get a true statement. So if I substitute back the negative 9 halves, I have 4 times negative 9 halves, which would give me negative 18, plus 5 is negative 13. But I have negative, I have 13, excuse me, I have negative 13 is less than negative 13. That is not a true statement, and that is exactly why we have the open point there. It's not going to give you a true statement because it's not part of your solution. It's a boundary point. Same thing holds true if I substitute the 2 in here. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. So my statement would say 13 is greater than 13. Again, this is false. But that tells me that this point should be open its boundary. It is not part of our solution. I now have two examples that I would like you to try. Here they are. What I would like you to do is I would like you to pause the video and try these. When you have finished, press play again to check your work. Here I have the absolute value of 2x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 1. Because I have greater than or equal to, I know it's going to be an OR statement. So I'm just going to go ahead and write down that OR, and then I'm going to write my compound inequalities. So I have 2x minus 7. Now I'm going to put a negative 1 over here, and because I changed it from 1 to negative 1, I have to change the inequality symbol from greater than or equal to to less than or equal to. Over here, I'm just going to rewrite it as it appears. 2x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 1. Just don't put the absolute value bars in there. All right, so on the left, I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and I would get 2x is less than or equal to 6. I would then divide by 2, and I would get 
get x is less than or equal to 3. Again, it's an or, so I'm going to write the word or in my solution. The inequality on the right, I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and I'll get 2x is greater than or equal to 8. I'm then going to divide by 2, and I'll get x is greater than or equal to 4. So here's my solution, but now I want to put it on a number line. So on the number line, since it's less than or equal to, I'm going to have a closed point at 3 and a closed point at 4. Now, since they're closed, this means it is part of my solution. Okay, so now I want to shade everything that's less than or equal to 3. So everything that's less than 3 is to the left of 3. So I shade to the left of the 3. I also want to shade everything that is greater than or equal to 4. So I shade to the right of my 4. So this is what my number line will look like. Now, this one you can check also. You can substitute the 3 in here. But because we have the equal to, we should get true statements which tell us our points on our number line should be solid. So let's double check. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 7. That's negative 1. Is negative 1 less than or equal to negative 1? Yes, it is. So that one is true, giving us a solid point on our number line. Over here on the right, I can substitute the 4 back in. I have 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 7 is 1. Is 1 greater than or equal to 1? Yes, it is. So again, it is part of my solution, and I have a solid point on my number line. How did you do? Hopefully you did well. Let's take a look at the next one. Here I have the absolute value of 3x plus 5 is less than 10. On this one, the less than indicates to me that we are going to have an and. Now, when I write my compound inequalities with and, I like to write them together. So what I do is I write the 3x plus 5 is less than 10, and it's going to be greater than a negative 10. Again, you can pull that apart and write it as two separate statements connected by and if you'd like, but this is the way I like to do it. So now I'm going to subtract 5. Remember, you don't just subtract 5 in two places. You subtract it in three because you're actually solving two inequalities at the same time. So I end up with negative 15 is less than 3x, which is less than 5. I would then divide by 3, and I would get negative 5 is less than x, which is less than 5 thirds. Now, if you would rather write that 5 thirds as 1 and 2 thirds, I'm fine with that also. Please, however, do not change it to a decimal. So here's my solution. What I want to do now is I want to put it on a number line. So I have an open point at negative 5, again, because there's no equal to in there. I have an open point at 5 thirds, which again is the same as 1 and 2 thirds. I want to shade everything that is less than 5 thirds, which means to the left. But I also want to shade everything that is greater than negative 5, which is to the right. So I'm going to be shading in between the two points. So there is what my number line will look like. Again, if you want to check the negative 5 and the 5 thirds to make sure that those are the correct points, feel free to substitute those in. I would substitute the negative 5 into the 3x plus 5 is greater than negative 10. And I would substitute the 5 thirds into the 3x plus 5 is less than 10. And if you do the math there, you'll see that it will work out. And they are your points. You do not, however, get true statements. So that is why you have open circles on your number line. Now what I want to do is I want to take a look at a story problem where you are actually going to create the absolute value inequality. 
So here we have a professional baseball should weigh 5.125 ounces with a tolerance of 0 0.125 ounces. Write and solve an absolute value inequality that describes the acceptable weights for the baseball. So let's talk about the word tolerance here. What that means is the ideal weight of a baseball is 5.125 ounces. However, professional players can still use a baseball that is 0.125 ounces greater than the 5.125 or less or one point, I'm sorry, or 0.125 ounces less than the 5.125. So the way I like to solve these problems is I like to start with a number line. And my ideal weight in this case is the 5.125 ounces. So that's right in the middle. That's ideally where I would like my baseball to fall. Okay, but I know that somewhere out here is another number that is acceptable. And I know that number is 0 0.125 ounces greater than the 5.125. Also, there's a point to the left that is, again, 0.125 ounces less than the 5.125 that is also acceptable. So what I need to do then is I'm going to let W equal the um, acceptable weight of the baseball, okay? And I know that I'm going to create an inequality using the W and these very important numbers in the problem. So I want my acceptable weight minus the 5.125 to compare to the 0 0.125. Well, how do I want it to compare? I actually want it to be less than or equal to the 0 0.125 because it can only be that much more or that much less and still be used. Now, you might be asking, why am I using subtraction instead of addition? Well, the reason I'm using subtraction is I know that if I take this 5.125 and add to it this 0 0.125, I'll get this number right here that we don't know. But I'm actually working backwards. So instead of adding the two, I get subtraction. And that's why I have subtraction there. Now, I did ask you to go ahead and solve it. So because this is a less than, less than or equal to, we would have an and statement. And I would rewrite this as W minus 5.125 is less than or equal to 0, sorry, 0 0.125 which is greater than or equal to negative 0 0.125. And you'd go ahead and add the 5.125 to both sides, and you would end up with this solution. W is less than or equal to 5.25 ounces, which is greater than or equal to 5 ounces. So in other words, a baseball team can play with a ball that weighs anywhere from 5 to 5.25 ounces. Here's my last one. Let's try it. On this one, I know the thickness of the mats used in gymnastics for rings, parallel bar bars, and vault events must be between 7.5 inches and 8.25 inches, inclusively. Write an absolute value inequality describing the acceptable mat thickness. Now again, this time I start with a number line, but I don't know this number in the middle. I know the extreme over here is 7.5, and the extreme over here is 8.25. So I have to find this number in the middle. Now if you think about your geometry, this number in the middle should be exactly between the two. 
So I can find the number in the middle by finding an average. So I'm going to take the 8.25, I'm going to add the 7.5 and divide by 2. When I do that, I get an average of 7.875. So that's what this number is, 7.875. I now know what um, the tolerance can be. Oh, no, I don't know the tolerance yet. I have to find that tolerance. The tolerance is going to be this distance, which is the same as this distance. So now I can take the 8.25 and subtract from it the 7.875 to get a tolerance of 3, I'm sorry, 0.3. Seven five, and that's inches in thickness. So again, if I let T equal the accepted th mat thickness, I would have the absolute value of T minus seven point eight seven five has to be less than or equal to the zero point three seven five. Again, we use subtraction because we're working backwards. Again, it's less than or equal to because the mats cannot be less than 7.5 inches thick and they cannot be more than 8.25 inches thick. Okay, so that concludes my examples for today. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Please let your teachers know if I made any mistakes or if I have any typos and we will go over some more examples in class. Thanks. Bye.